The definition of what a planet is has changed numerous times over the years, and it probably will change again because science is a system of questioning and changing previous ideas based on what is learned and tested against observations. So what we will focus on in this episode is the basic current understanding of what a planet is. A planet is a celestial body that A is in orbit around the sun, B has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so that it assumes a nearly round shape, and C has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Now a dwarf planet has most of the same qualities except it hasn't cleared its neighborhood around its orbit and has the added requirement of not being a satellite, you know, like a moon. Much of what we learned about planets early on was as a result of observations scientists have made about the planets in our own solar system. And these planets are very diverse, from gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn to the smaller rocky terrestrial planets like Earth and Mars. It's interesting to note that before the 1990s, we didn't know a single thing about any other worlds outside of the ones in our own neighborhood. Sure, we imagined what they could be like through science fiction, but had no hard data about them. But of course, that's changed now, thanks to our ever-advancing tools of observation. Now astronomers have found more than 230 planets outside of our solar system, and many of them are vastly different than the ones we observed earlier. Now the majority of planets we have found are these huge gas giants, but we have observed a few of them that are similar to Earth in that they are rocky terrestrial planets. How do astronomers find these exoplanets? Well, they have a few methods radio velocity, microlensing, and transit photometry. Then I'll leave some links in the description box on radio velocity and microlensing so you can get more information about those methods. But I want to discuss transit photometry because this was the first method I learned about before researching for this video. The transit photometry method detects distant planets by measuring the minute dimming of a star as an orbiting planet passes between it and the Earth. The passage of a planet between a star and the Earth is called a transit. If they detect dimming at regular intervals and it lasts a fixed length of time, then it's very probable that a planet is orbiting a star and passing in front of it once every orbital period. The dimming also directly reflects the size ratio between the star and the planet. Small planets transiting a large star will only create a slight dimming, whereas larger planets transiting a small star has a more noticeable effect. Pretty ingenious, huh? Well, that's all for me today, Reapers. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the Reaper Legion Network and help our community grow. And as always, please, geek responsibly. Thanks for watching guys, but don't go anywhere just yet. Check out some of the other videos on the channel, and if you look in the description box, you'll find links to our Facebook, Instagram, and our official website.